Now, this is one that is right up my alley. I mean, I do own a Triumph, a KTM, and a Ducati. I just need to pick up a BMW and an MV Agusta, and my Euro Snob Infinity Gauntlet will be complete. But before you write this whole video off as me waxing poetic about how much more soulful Euro bikes are, and how there's a certain je ne sais quoi about them that Japanese bikes just don't have, let me say that it's true. There's nothing a Euro bike can give you that a Japanese bike won't for a whole lot less money. An MT-10 will go just as fast as a Super Duke and handle just as well, and they both have absolutely god-tier exhaust notes, but when it comes to price tags, there's no denying that $13,000 is a smaller number than $19,000. But you don't buy a Euro bike because it provides more power per dollar or because it's easy to maintain because generally they're not. You buy them because you want to have a bike where the manufacturer is so proud of the bike they made a whole 18-minute video talking about how awesome their bike is. You buy it because it's classy and unique and tickles your pickle and all the right ways. But let's say you want to be an apex Euro snob. What bike should you be looking for that would make your fellow Euro boys bow down before you, green with envy, as you ride straight to the dealership to have your oil serviced and changed because doing it yourself is for peasants? Well, aren't you a lucky dude? Because I've got seven of the best Euro snob motorcycles ever in this video. Now look, before we jump in guys, I need you to understand that our 2021 Turbo Hayabusa 1 million subscriber initiative is happening. I have literally cut the check for the turbo kit for this Busa. I want to turbo it this year, but I'm only going to do it at 1 million subscribers. Actually, I'm probably not gonna literally install it at 1 million because I want the video to go up right when I hit a million subscribers. But anyways, do me a solid, just press that subscribe button. YouTube will love us more for having more subscribers. We'll get recommended more and it will literally cost you nothing. Do your part, commit to the squid degeneracy that is slapping a turbo on a motorcycle that already has a 1300cc engine. I wanna feel the almighty power of a 250 wheel horsepower on something that could double as a prop on the casting couch videos. Okay, enough self-promotion. Ocean. Let's check out these Euro beauties. Number seven on the list today goes to the Ducati 916. This is one of the most beautiful bikes ever made. I mean, just look at it. It's got the single-sided swing arm, exposed trellis frame, classic Ducati red and white paint, and lovely V-twin exhaust note. The 916 was made from 1994 to 1998, making it a very exclusive motorcycle. And its 916cc engine puts down 114 horsepower and 66 foot-pounds of torque. Sure, it's not the 160-ish horsepower power of a modern Panigale V2, but it weighs in at 429 pounds wet, so it's a little lighter, and let's face it, you don't buy a 916 to extract every ounce of power out of it. You buy it so that you can roll up to bike night in your matching Dainese leather jacket that's period correct and bask in the attention and admiration of everyone around you. If you want to be even fancier, you can pick up yourself a 916 Senna edition, which was a special edition of the bike, because you know Ducati's got to have their special editions. The 916 was replaced by the 996 and the 998, which tried to keep the same style but with the bigger engine. There can be only one genuine article and there was also the 999 but we don't really talk about that one. If you want a 916 you can get decent examples for around $8,000 but if you're a Euro snob you don't want decent you want pristine and in that case be prepared to shell out about $20,000 for a bike that makes about the same amount of power as an MT-09 but rest assured that you'll have a true icon of Italian motorcycling in your garage. Let's get a quick sound clip of this beautiful classic Desmo V-Twin. Number six goes to the Triumph Daytona 675R. Of course I had to put this in here. Did you honestly think that I put together a list of the best Euro snob machines of all time and not include the Daytona? Who the hell do you think I am? It's got everything you could ever want out of a sport bike. Super aggressive ergo so you can achieve maximum tuck, a massive ram air intake on the front so you can achieve maximum suck, and a one-of-a-kind styling that so you can achieve maximum Euro simp. I tried to find a third word that would rhyme there, but I couldn't. Sorry, your OCD will just have to suffer. In all seriousness, the Daytona is an excellent bike. It's a 675cc triple that makes a potent 128 horsepower and 55 foot-pounds of torque. And the triple's power delivery is one of the most linear and predictable power curves out there. It weighs in at only 406 pounds wet, which means you can easily get the bike under 400 pounds with just a few mods. And it's got a big old analog tachometer right in your face. 
Let me tell you, there is nothing quite like running that bike through the gears around a track, watching that needle ping at 14,400 RPMs and hitting the quick shifter at wide open throttle. If you want a Daytona, you can still find them for under 10 grand. And while it might surprise you to hear this, I actually don't recommend buying the 765 Moto2 Edition Daytona. Yes, it's a special edition. There's only 765 of them in the US, but it's basically a glorified street triple wrapped in carbon fiber. If you really want a proper sport bike, get the 675. It is the real deal Daytona. Just don't try and turn it into a race bike like I did. Trust me, it's really not worth it. Just get a Jixer. Let's get a sound clip of that glorious triple cylinder. Now let's finish out the attainable Euro bikes with an absolute weapon, one of the greatest on-track riding experiences that I've ever had. Number five goes to the KTM RC8R, one of the best motorcycles KTM ever built, and I'm completely dumbfounded that they don't want to make another super sport. First released in 2005, the RC8R used an 1195cc V-twin that put down 195 horsepower and a prodigious 94 foot-pounds of torque. KTM would later use a bigger version of that engine than the Super Duke, but in a sport bike package that was raw and angry bike. It was shockingly easy to ride. It's a little lighter than most modern leader bikes around 432 pounds to the R1's 441, and it doesn't have all the crazy technology like traction control, six axis IMU, adjustable rider modes, and all that jazz. It's just a cable throttle and an angry V-twin ready to rip your arms off. What's nuts is it's got adjustable foot pegs, levers, seat, and clip-ons to make it more comfortable for street duty or to dial it into the racetrack. If you want to be a maniac and daily the RC8R, you can. It's a one-of-a-kind sport bike and no one's going to confuse it for anything other than a KTM thanks to its unique headlight design, exposed orange frame, and all the sharp angles and cuts on the bike. If you're thinking about picking up an RC8R, you better snatch one up because they are getting rarer and more expensive by the day. You can find them for around $8,000 if you're lucky, but be prepared to spend around 10 grand for this bike. This motorcycle is seriously sharp around the racetrack and is incredibly fun to ride. Let's get a sound clip of this awesome bike. But enough of the sport bikes, what about a classic, something with real hipster cred? Number four is the Vincent Black Shadow. First released in 1948, the Vincent Black Shadow was marketed as the world's fastest motorcycle with a top speed of 125 miles per hour. Oh, how quaint the early days of motorcycling were when 55 horsepower was considered industry leading. But considering the other bikes available at the time, this thing was an absolute missile. What's even more impressive is it was the first bike to use a monoshock cantilever style rear suspension, which which is now commonplace among fancy motorcycles. But no one is buying a Vincent nowadays because of the performance. Much like the 916, there are infinitely better motorcycles in its class, and if you roll up on a Vincent, you're gonna be the only one at a bike night that knows what it is and why it's special. Though that isn't the reason you buy a motorcycle like this. Because you enjoy explaining to people why your motorcycle is so significant and why you don't have to justify spending $43,000 on a motorcycle that just makes a little bit more power than a Ninja 400. You enjoy being an apex hipster, and all the guys on modern Bonnevilles are just jealous that they don't have to deal with carburetors and don't have to search for engine parts for a bike that's been out of production for longer than most boomers have been alive. Or maybe that's what you tell yourself when you have to wheel your bike back on the lift because something else broke and you have to empty your bank account to find it. So far, we've covered bikes that normally normal Euro simps can attain, and a classic icon, but where are the bikes that are so rare and so expensive that only the true max level ascended Euro simp may even gaze upon them, let alone even consider purchase one? Well, let's start out with perhaps the most obvious choice, the MV Agusta Brutale 1000 Siri Oro, the fastest naked bike in the world, or so the website claims. What's interesting is that they don't even bother advertising it as a bike you should take to the track, all they care about is straight line speed. But anyway, the Siri Oro has a 998cc inline 4 making 208 horsepower in sock trim, but with a mere 5,000 extra bucks, a new exhaust system, and an ECU flash, you could put down a whole 4 more horsepower. But for a bike that costs you 52 grand, what's an extra 5 grand, right? Now, they claim a top speed of 300 kph, which translates into 186 freedoms per cheeseburger, but there's a little asterisk next to that number, which means that it's limited, so theoretically you could push that bike faster if you wanted. The only question 
question is, what happens if you wad it up or grenade the engine? Oh wait, we're talking about Eurosims, and you can't put a price on performance. You will just pull up the website and get another bike on order. When it comes to looks, the Siri Oro is very much a love it or hate it bike. No one will mistake it for anything other than the MV Agusta, but you might have to explain how it's an MV and not a Ducati. Let's get a quick sound clip of this thing. The only bike that could beat the Siri Oro in terms of exclusivity would have to go to a brand new Ducati Superleggera V4, costing you a cool 100 grand. This V4 monster puts down 234 horsepower and 88 foot-pounds of torque with literally every safety and technological farkle you could imagine, and a carbon fiber frame because why not? The Superleggera is for the Ducatista that doesn't ride a motorcycle because, let's face it, ain't nobody riding a $100,000 motorcycle to the office. This motorcycle is bought by the Ducatista who trades in last year year's Superleggera for the newest model year because they've grown bored of last year's status symbol. If you purchase one of these bikes, you only go to the Ducati sponsored events, you park it on the front row of Ducati Island at Coda when MotoGP comes to America, you ride in a one-piece Ducati race suit even when you're going to the coffee shop, you park your bike inside your penthouse apartment. You've ascended beyond the ranks of a mortal Ducatista and become something else entirely. You sleep on a bed of dollar bills with Ducati bedspread, you have Ducati branded underwear, and eat with Ducati branded gold and silverware. You're you're the Euro snob incarnate, but you're still not at the top and it burns you to the very pit of your soul. But before we check out number one, you gotta listen to how the Super Legera sounds. <laughs> Now the number one spot of intense Euro simping goes to none other than the Energica Ego 45, a bike you've probably never heard of before. For those of you who don't know, Energica is the Ducati of electric motorcycles, and the Ego is their flagship sport bike. The Ego 45 was a limited run of brand new electric sport bikes, and it would new would have cost you $68,000. But the real reason it's here is because of the experience you got when you bought one of these bikes. You'd put your order in and then fly out to the factory, sign an NDA, and then take a guided tour of the Energica factory. You'd see how the bike was built step by step and watch parts being 3D printed and assembled. Once the one hour tour of this bike is over, they hand you the keys to the bike which is numbered, an exclusive watch made out of wood to go with your bike. And that's what separates a true Euro snob from the rest of them. Sure, you could have taken the obvious route and brought a crazy Ducati, you could have gotten some rare and discontinued sport bike, but you're a different breed. You realize that a motorcycle is nothing without an experience to go with, a story, and there's no emozione rather than watching your motorcycle being put together and then literally riding off into the sunset as a one-of-a-kind steed. It doesn't matter that it'll run out of charge before you make it home, because that's just part of the adventure. Fact: Hawaiian Pizza was created in Ontario, Canada by Greek immigrant Sam Panopoulos in 1962. Goodbye. Oh, hey, you're still here. I can't believe you made it to the end of the video. Not many people do. Just for you, I have a little treat. Hit this link over here, check out the next video on the Yamanube catalog. What's gonna happen in it? I don't really know. Maybe there's a boost in it, maybe there's some cool wheelies, maybe there's some fun memes. Probably, who can say?